And welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Student Section Podcast, a podcast where college students talk sports. I'm your host, Gary Sussman, not a student, and I'm joined by two members of the Student Section, Fire and Ice, as we like to call them, Aiden Lavin and Will the Thrill Rosen, who are season ticket holders in the bleachers of the Student Section. On today's show, we'll talk Caitlin Clark, Marist Hoops, the Jersey Shore, and I'm not talking Snooky and Paulie D. The <laughs> Final Four, Patriot Dynasty on Apple TV, maybe we'll get there, and do a deep dive on men's lacrosse here in Marist with our special guest, Josh Balkersell, <laughs> the pride of Milford, Pennsylvania, and a valued member of the men's lacrosse team at Marist. So let's say hello to the student section, Aiden and Will. Good afternoon, man. What's going on? How are we, How doing? we feeling Good. these days? I'm great. Yeah. Can't complain. I'm ready for uh, spring break, obviously. Um, it's going to be fun to have Josh Balker sell on. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. Excited. Ready to go. All right. Will, I know you've been a little under the weather, but as a true, you know, uh, men of the transaction list you were listed as questionable i was i was, I was upgraded listed. to probable yeah and uh i was a game time decision heading into <laughs> yesterday uh but made the bend and i'm feeling better but uh everyone make sure to keep uh having some vitamin c mm. uh, washing your hands yep. staying staying healthy i think the spring break is much needed for everyone right, there we go will with a little health tip along with sports you get everything here we're like the 7-eleven we are uh, we are of uh uh, Lowell Thomas. Um, so let's get right. We have a great show today. Uh, looking forward to Josh. Very, very interesting young man. A lot of stuff to talk about there. But let's go first to the tape room, which today I'm going to call the prop room. Okay. I'll tell you why. Because we're going to be given props. Oh. And the first prop is very apropos. You know, Will came up with the name student section. And the Maris Fairfield game on Friday night, this past Friday, a red out, national yeah. TV, the student section showed up, and props to the Marist student community. But as an outsider, uh, you guys the prop live room. it. I see what you did there. You guys live it. What, do you th what was the pull? Why was that game? Because on Sunday against Iona, it was a good crowd, but you didn't have yeah. all the students. We're, you know. It, there's what a multi it? there's a multitude of reasons. First of all, how how important that game was standing wise at that point. Mm -hmm. That's one. Two, ESPN U national televised game. For those who hear like, oh, we're we're a mid major. Maris is a mid major D one school. We have our games on ESPN Plus. It's very cool. But when it comes down to it, to be on cable and be that accessible, I think that's a big selling point. Mm -hmm. People want to come. You know, oh my goodness, I was on TV. Take a picture. Whatever. Three, I think the red out, it was, it was the Marist Boosters Club organized the red out. And a lot of students came, more than usual, more than ever that I've ever seen here. I think that needs to continue and have every game of red out. I think that if we <laughs> have that energy, and it's, it, I'm serious, that, that's one thing that we lack a little bit mm. is the student athlete, not the student athlete, but the student comma athlete connection. I think that it was such a great atmosphere. I watched it on TV. I popped by for a few minutes, but it was it was just a fant it's a fantastic atmosphere. I think that just needs to continue and especially now with our great men's basketball program, mm -hmm. hopefully that continues and we, we we just have as many fans as we can. As I think it's Friday really night. about what, promotion. What it's all about promotion. The same with what we're trying to do here. Everything is about promotion. I think they it started like a week before the mm -hmm. game. And even when we had Jaden on, which was way in advance, everyone knew that a red out was coming up. So if you promote the game and have a theme for it, it doesn't need to be a red out every single game. You can have a white out. You could have like Hawaiian theme. But if you have a theme and you promote it, which is tough to do because there are so many games in the schedule. So if there's two games in a week and you're only it able to, to promote Friday one. I think yeah. It only can work Friday night. And honestly, yeah. I don't know what, what – happened but i think that espnu is a huge selling could point. be yeah and i know last year uh they had a red out and it was the same thing so when they promote games further in advance rather than oh today's game day so show up if you're around that makes students more prone to show up it was interesting to me because the only time i had seen that previously in my 
tenure here, which is about seven or eight years, is that the lacrosse team mm. had an NCAA game at Tenney. Uh, the weather was beautiful, and the stands were packed, mm-hmm. and the fans had a great time, and it, there was a real college atmosphere. And I know that that's always been an issue is the student support of the programs. And what was interesting to me was I was very curious to see what would happen on Sunday because it was a great game. Maris came from 13 down. Everybody had a good time. Yep. There was a lot of, I was termed electric, mm-hmm. which you never really hear about. Mm-hmm. But yet on Sunday, another big game mm-hmm. against Iona, you would have thought that there would have been momentum. some momentum problem. Beautiful day. Yep. Two o'clock in the afternoon. On a Sunday. On a Sunday. I know I wasn't there. Right. On a Sunday. And so that's, you know, the crux of the, the problem. Yeah. I, 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 I think I'm only a first year here, and this is what I've seen. On a random Thursday, a random... T- I go to every game, whether I'm... Usually I'm working it. But if I'm not, I'm going as a as a fan. You're not the you're not the casual student. I'm not the casual student. I'm a sports crazy head that I go to if there's a lacrosse game, any game Marist, I will go to because why not? I want to support them. I'm curious, and it's it's you know it's it's a good it's a high level sport that I can go to. But for on the basketball end, realistically, you have native Poughkeepsie native Poughkeepsians. You have faculty. I don't even think a lot of faculty. You have the you have more of the athletic faculty you have some sports communication people mm-hmm. will go if they're non-working like not working the game they go as a fan then besides for that the band <laughs> cheer dance cheer dance you you don't really have like students going to these games yeah and i think it's a it's not a it's not a great thing that we have to improve especially when i'm going with my group of friends who love basketball, who follow the team every night. We watch every away game on ESPN+. Plus. We go to every game. They're in the, in the, what, what the student section, no pun intended. <laughs> I, th- I think sports, and we're a really good athletic school. We have 23 Division I athletics, and they're pretty good. Sure, we have a few off years here and there, but right now we have the best, no, we have the best basketball team in 13 years. Yeah. I mean, our team is electric right now. Yeah. I was talking to some of my friends, and um, I think it's all about momentum, like you said, Will, but not only momentum within the season. I think it starts in the fall um, with the football, soccer, all the fall sports. If they perform well, which I know men's soccer had somewhat of a down year, football was around 500 again, sometimes those aren't as exciting and all the momentum kind of falls off. You go into winter break and you're not really looking forward to watching any of the Marist sports. But if there's something successful that happens in the fall, that carries into winter break and you're ready to go to the Marist athletics that are in the winter. And you're ready to see the teams play because you have already had success in the Mm -hmm. fall. So I think it's a collective effort. And next year, it should be very interesting to see being that there's a new head coach. Just just last point on that. T- take a take a high le- a, pa- a power five school mm-hmm. for instance, and I'm not comparing us. We'll never we're never just just a phys- physical blockade. We count, but I think the issue is sometimes, and I I would love to like genuinely. I I care about the school. I've been here a month, and I genuinely care about it, and I want to see it blossom and continue to blossom. I think the issue is sometimes, at least on the student end. I'm a freshman, first year. This is how I feel. I go to class. And I end the day at, at 3.30. I end the day at 4.15. Say there's a game at 7. I, what, there's, no, like, there's no place to go as a community. So I end up going back to my room. And for me, I, I'll go to my room and then I'll go to McCann. But for the average person, you go to your room, you get distracted, you, know, you have some work to do, you have, you have the TV. You, there's no like, oh, I'm, go- I'm done with class. I'm going to say... Lil Thomas Lounge, and then from the lounge, we're going to McCann as a group, like 300 mm-hmm. of us. There's no like location. Everything stems off of your living space rather than a location. Take a big te- big time school, you'll have you'll have some big the pregame big yeah. pregame events hosted tailgate by the party. school, a mm-hmm. tailgate unaffiliated with the school, and then everyone will just start w- walking into the stadium at a certain time. 
I think that's that's a miss that we physically can't have as as a as a as a school that's you know I'm not saying it's a commuter school but it's not physically mm -hmm. as large as these schools even with our athletic program being the way it is and I think that's something that like genuinely I would love to be a part of of change. Yeah. It would be interesting if they can capture cuz to me it was a perfect storm. You had national TV, you had the red out, you had a Friday night. Mm -hmm. And I when I first started teaching here there was a promotion called Pack the House, mm. which was part of the sports PR curriculum, part of the syllabus. And it was a competition among school. I don't remember whatever. But the whole object was to put together a promotion to bring, student, bring students to the game to pack the house. And before I got here, they, uh, they usually would do a women's game, and they would get 2,500 people. Or I mean, they would really pack, you know, but then... You wouldn't get that as far as the momentum situation uh, subsequently. So I think, though, that as looking back on the season, that one game will stand out because of the participation, because of the electric atmosphere. And so I think that will behoove everyone to try to capture that in some way, shape, or form going forward into the next year. Personally, I'm not saying this for you. I'm not saying this for you. I, I, I'm afraid that, like, that's been said before and it's kind of just all talk, right? Like, that, you said this happened last year. We I had think... Uh, I've seen Instagram pictures and yeah. I've asked around. That happens once a year and then it dies until the next year, like one random game that's either on ESPN U or they decide, oh, this is going to be the game. I think it has to be... 75 plus percent of games at that level last Entertainment year plays a big factor in that last year we had arguably the best player in our history <laughs> per season since rick smith's yep and we have this year such an unbelievable record-wise team mm -hmm. i mean it's not like we don't have selling points patrick garner was averaging almost 20 a game yep and no one really knows that if you're not in with the sports communication program or in with like the athletic like or you're super you know, sports freak. Mm -hmm. It's not to the general folk. Oh, Patrick Gart, who's that? What, he, he gardens. No one really like <laughs> nobody. Oh, J uh, Jaden Collins. We know him, of course, and we love him to death. But to the average Friend Maris, the to the average Maris student, th there's no like connection. Well, hopefully, the success of the team will uh, spread. I hope so. Should, I would love it. Also. It spreads amongst the basketball community outside of the campus, mm -hmm. and so you get more people who want to watch basketball. Yes, rather than yeah, coming to to watch the games. And just uh, uh, before we get off of this, uh, we had uh, training camp at Duke two years, which was a great experience. And the SID would tell me that even though you see all the Duke crazies on camera, he said that for the past couple of years they were having trouble getting students to come to the game hmm. because most of the students were more academically oriented, mm -hmm. not sports oriented. Yeah. And though, even though you, you, and perception is reality, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes. And because you see the Duke crazies, we said there was a lot of unsold tickets because they couldn't get students to come to the game. So, mm -hmm. um, look, it's, it's been an issue. It's been a, 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 a talking point for a long time. But I just thought, Props to whoever, whoever came. It was the boosters. It was a great game, and it helped the team. Yep. They won the game. They were hyped. And it they enjoyed it. It was a it. game that you need to win when mm -hmm. you have all those people there, and the first half didn't look good, but uh, yeah. props to them on the court and props to everybody off the court. Um, and so my second prop of the, of the show, um, I think we have to give props to uh, – uh, Caitlin Clark for mm -hmm. being the face of college basketball. Jim Beheim said that she's the only college player, male or female, that he tunes in to watch. Mm. Uh, 3.4 million people watched her game against Ohio State, most people since 1999. And I just read this morning that, now this never came to fruition, but this is crazy, that Fox, NBC, Peacock, we're going to get together as a consortium to put together an NIL package to get her to stay mm, for wow. another year because she was a ratings bonanza. And so props to her for, you know, 
you have to just give her her due as a great player. Pistol Pete, you can't men and women. Serena wasn't as great as Rafa. Serena mm -hmm. wasn't as good. She was the great, you know, she was great in her own element. And what Caitlin Clark has done, she's Steph. Yep. She's Steph. Mm -hmm. She's transforming the women's game. She is Steph. So whether she's the greatest, not, who cares? Yeah. She's transformative. She's unbelievable. I tune in to watch her. Mm -hmm. Just a regular sports guy. Yep. Props to her, man. I like the fact that you always revisit that she's the face of college basketball because you just <laughs> want to put it in Will's well, face. Well, we had that discussion, yeah. and I was a little taken aback <laughs> that Will the Thrill thought that some guy from Duke was the face of college <laughs> basketball, and you and I stuck to our guns, and uh, uh, you know we'll take the W on that. I like I like her growth more. Of I've seen a lot about how she was just so dedicated to being in the gym all the time. And she didn't really do anything outside of that. But now she realizes the platform that she has. And she's trying to do her best to inspire others um, through her play and then also outside of the, the game. Because I guess she used to like not talk to fans at all. And she would just go about her business. But now she's willing to interact, which is super cool and super, I think, mature of her. Um, that she's doing things girl. outside I mean, of the court. Yeah. yeah. And there's so many young girls who come and guys who come to watch her play and so you know next year she and she was she said she didn't want to lead anybody on that's why she declared said she yeah. was going to go to the WNBA Indiana Fever yeah. have the number one draft choice they'd be dumb if they don't take her well and to me I don't even think that's a question I think it's great for the league that they have her not in New York right. or Brooklyn or LA uh, I, see I I think it's great. I, I think that's a, that, that's a. I think it's. I, great. I, I highly disagree with you. Not saying Indiana is the the smallest of market, but to stick someone of her caliber on the Indiana Fever rather than have her on the Sparks or the Storm or the Liberty. All right, let me ask you this. And and, and but the thing like, I, at a point she will leave. It's not. I don't believe. That she's she's that. bigger than that team. At for the point. league, I think it's a great boost because when she goes on the road now, oh, those games become so The Liberty tickets already went up 29%. The, the TV 40%. ratings, people will tune in to watch. Because let's say, for example, let's say Brooklyn ha or the New York Liberty. I don't know where they – the New York Liberty. Mm -hmm. Look at the – star. look who they have on that team. Yeah. Stewart. You add another it, – it, Oh, no. All, There's got to be know, some parity. It's like the Dodgers. Yeah. You know. But I, it, uh, the, my NBA comparison for it is – Kind of Luca, right? Yeah. Mm. You have him, the, the top five player in the league, and he's great. I love him, and I think he's a fantastic individual player. Will he ever win on Dallas? No. Will he ever get <laughs> as popular as if he were in one of the higher top three, four markets? Dallas isn't too far outside of that, though. Well, because of him. Well, LeBron yeah. played for the majority of his career at <coughs> Cleveland and Miami. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. also, My, yeah. where, where Caitlin goes doesn't have anything to do with other than Caitlin the fact Clark that... I think Caitlin Clark is big, bigger than most of the teams in the WNBA at this yeah. point. Probably, yeah. but... It's, it's, it's going to be very interesting to see if she can elevate the league. Going to the Fever is not her choice. She doesn't get to pick where right. she wants to go. It's all about who finished and last. Brianna Stewart it. left... Yeah. You know, oh, you know what I would have loved to see? I would have loved to see an Eli Manning situation. That would have just been beautiful. Wouldn't that, <laughs> wouldn't that be draft, great? She's can't like, draft me. No, no. No, no. No, no. That Phil, would have been. Philip Rivers, you go to San yeah. Diego. <laughs> yeah. Eli, you come to That New would have been beautiful. But I just think props to her because I think that uh, uh, it's a force. And Big Ten tournament is already sold out. And um, uh, I have a uh, uh, someone I know who deals in a – a company that provides event experiences. And so he went to the final four. They do the final four. And he goes, this year, uh, he said to me, he said, uh, women's final four? I said, yeah, I think that you probably want to probably want to make hmm. your way there. Speaking of women's basketball, we have some, some crazy Mac news in women's basketball. Fairfield. Fairfield, the, 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 the stags, yep. the women's basketball stags. That Staggering was awesome. this year. Oh, my goodness. They are uh, the first MAC team since Marist in 2007, or 2008, I believe mm -hmm. it's seven, to be AP and USA ranked. Did you see their Twitter? No, but you know what's interesting about this? As sick as Will was, he still was able to do his homework and do his research. That's right. That work ethic will pay off. All right, guys. The Fairfield Twitter, 
Um, oh yes, we, we yeah did. we talked about that. Yeah, that was explained. To, uh, that was awesome. Explained. They put a uh, basically a letter together to the NCAA. They tagged them in their post, and then uh, they were explaining that they should have a shot at being in the top twenty-five. Which obviously, it was like kind of a joke, but also like they were trying to get themselves recognized by the uh, <laughs> by the internet and then the rest of the basketball community. They attached a uh, a resume with. Megan Anderson and the other players on the team, their skills, their their uh, <coughs> achievements. in a row. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty cool. I thought it was awesome that they did that. Um, whoever came up with that deserves a raise, but I don't know who it was. It wasn't uh, Juliana, who used to work here as an SID. It was not her, but whoever it was, it was a great job. Like, I think it got, like, over 400,000 v- mm-hmm. views before they were uh, – Named to the top twenty-five, and then a bunch of people started reposting it after it did actually happen. Yeah, the Mac is making moves. St. Yeah. Peter's, Fairfield, tremendous job by them. Yeah. I mean, uh, and listen, they have the record to prove it. So, uh, uh, props to them yep. as well. And my third, um, it's going to be in Caitlin Clark. It's I, I, can't, I can't wait for the tournament now, and hopefully, they Iowa makes it. She's like Larry Bird was with Indiana State. You guys will probably remember this, yeah. but Larry Bird took Indiana State on his back all the way to the national championship game where they played Magic and Michigan State. and they, That was around my eighth birthday, I think. They were able to uh, you know, devise their defense so that they could corral. Larry Bird. Legend. And that, you know, then those guys came into the league together, and it was, uh, uh, everything was history after that. And one last prop, speaking of that, um, we have to give props to LeBron and 40,000 mm-hmm. points, approaching 40 years old. And you who? Know, I think who? <laughs> not Brunson, LeBron. <laughs> the one on uh, uh, USC. Mm, uh, LeBron that's James. That's Bronny, Jr. I think. Right, so Bron- So, which leads me to my next point, mm. which a very good transition. Thank well, you. The drugs that you've been taking this week did not dull you. <laughs> um, a lot of Adam. You no, know, he <laughs> said that Bronny was now put on draft list for second round, not first round, and then he complained about that was silly. I'm sorry. Complained about that, you know, let the kid play and so on and so forth. When he was the one who said that. You're going to start igniting he, the fire if you keep talking about that. He, he's that was who bad. Said that he's better than some of the guys on the list right now. And now he's complaining about now, it. Let's slow down. First of all, he had a heart ailment, missed training camp. Okay. Secondly, he's averaging five points a game. Mm-hmm. We don't even know if, if Bronny is. Let him be. We don't even know if he's an NBA player. Mm-hmm. You know, let him be. Yep. It's a. It's. Tough enough to have that name to begin with. He was talking about playing with him in the NBA uh, four years before ago. he even got to college. Yeah, like as a freshman in high school. So, what does he? What does he want? That it, it's not. Uh. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I think it's a non-story. Yeah. Well, well, I just don't like that he's complaining about it after he's the one that brought it to the surface. Yeah, it, it puts too much pressure on him. Yeah. You know, just let everybody be. LeBron, his career is unmatched. Now, whether he's the greatest of all time, that is subjective, and people of different generations will have different opinions. What, what do you think? But in terms of he's had the greatest career yeah. Yeah. of all time, whether he's the greatest player of all time, the way that the league was when Jordan played, where you could be, uh, literally beat people up, and physic- it was so much more physical, I think every... Every era is different, so um, that, I'll leave it at that. So uh, that concludes this portion of the tape room, a.k.a. prop room. <laughs> Coming up is our uh, the pride of Milford, Pennsylvania, so I think it's only fitting, Will, as the voice of men's lacrosse, that you give an intro to our upcoming guest. All right. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, Josh Balkersell <laughs> joins the show. Give it up for Josh, everyone. Yeah. I would like for you to announce him oh, as if you're bringing okay. him onto the field. Okay. All right. Um, Cold call. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> this is like a singer doing yeah. an acapella. From Milford, Pennsylvania, number 34, Josh Balkersell. Welcome, Josh, to the show, everybody. That was fantastic. Very good. We'll be back after this. The Student Section Podcast is presented by the Marist Center of Sports Communications. Tune in to Center Field for all articles and the Red Fox Report on ESPN Broadcasts.
And welcome back to the student section. We're talking lacrosse with our special guest, the pride of Milford, Pennsylvania. And I don't know if he knows it, but he's sitting right next to the voice of men's lacrosse. <laughs> so, Will, why don't you introduce oh, we'll our do it special guest? We'll do it again. We'll do it again. Okay, a little preview. Uh, number th okay. Yeah, you have to get, you know, got to get, uh, you probably, we have, this is the first Josh is hearing, hearing this. <sighs> Welcome to the show, number 34, Josh Balkersell. There we go. Welcome. Nice. Welcome, Josh. That was great. First Thank of you. all, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming. Um, great to have you on. We have a lot to talk about with you. You have a very interesting and varied background. Um, before we start talking about you, the team getting ready to start the MAC, uh, the MAC season, what's the vibe on the team as, uh, as you approach uh, Wagner? Yeah, um, yeah, I think, you know, out of conference play, it's it's a big test for us, especially we're going against teams that, you know, the world sees as as being better than us. Um, and, you know, we're going into those games with, with a chip on our shoulder and knowing that and trying to kind of put Marist and our program on the mat. Uh, but now going into MAC play, um, you know, we, we have that target on our backs, especially coming from a MAC championship. Um, and we know that, but... Uh, we also know that every team is gonna gonna play their best against us and and want to knock us down. So we're fired up for Saturday and and we're excited to start the uh, the maction we call it. Oh yeah, you looking for another five goal game to start out the match? Um, like you did start out the season this year. That was outstanding. Uh, this guy's uh, this guy's unbelievable. <laughs> outstanding. It, it, it's, it's a he, pleasure to watch him. It's, I'm dead serious. He's like Gretzky behind the net. That's what he is. <laughs> He's like Gretzky behind the net. I appreciate it. No, uh, I'm, I'm starting to blush a little bit. Uh, <laughs> no, but I, I'm hoping. I mean, that's the plan. I think, you know, being later in the season now and having teams, you know, having film on you, it's, it's harder in the sense of, you know, they're watching my tendencies and they're watching how I play my game. So I think the next step for me is kind of being able to evolve and, and use that to my advantage try to change some things up, make myself a little uncomfortable getting to the net. and um, But, yeah, hopefully I can, I can have a performance like Bucknell. It's the plan. I think for most lacrosse players, you would know, obviously, um, a lot of them are around six foot and they're all – lengthy but for mm -hmm. you you're one of the more undersized kids on the team and just in lacrosse in general but you still find a way to get it done so I'm curious to know how as you know being undersized what are the pros and then also the cons of, of being undersized yeah I'd say uh the pros with that is just having more of a quick step and and being able to use you know my low center of gravity to have a quick change of direction and and also just kind of be able to manipulate their longer strides. And because, you know, I'm going against poles that are averaging, you know, mm -hmm. six foot to six three. Um, so I think just kind of manipulating their footwork and um, being able to get them to open up their hips because one big stride for them is three quick steps that I can make to, to change direction. So I think that's kind of a pro. And then going into the cons, um, it's kind of similar to the pro actually with, you know, if I'm trying to beat them north, south to the cage, my, their one stride is, is mm. my three steps, you know? So kind of just, I think that's why I rely on change of direction a lot of the time, just because my full stride length is, is nowhere close to theirs. But, um, so I'd say that's one con. Explain to the audience, explain to Gary, who's, uh, who's unfortunately hasn't been to a lacrosse game. Where was this, that? Is this not season, true. This season. This season. This, <laughs> this season. <laughs> this season just started. Yeah. Explain, just started. explain to the audience wh when it, the eruption occurs after mm -hmm. a, a either a game-winning goal that you recently had as a mm -hmm. team or some unbelievable move that happens and the crowd just erupts, oohs and mm -hmm. ahs, like audible oohs and ahs from an outdoor stadium, especially Tenney, mm -hmm. where football, you might not get the quick like crowd burst. What does that bring to the team and yourself? Uh, I think it's a big morale booster, and it's, it's something that we hear, and, and it gets us fired up on the sidelines. I mean, 
the sideline alone, uh, after every goal, after yeah, every big play, after every loud. big hit. It's, it's popping. Yeah, there's always, you know, you got some <laughs> – you got guys that that are playing within the role, and although they're not seeing time on the field at times, they're they're really embracing that that support role and and really getting fired up. and And guys on the field, we eat that up, and and we feed off of that. And then, you know, Tenny being designed the way it is, having like the the stands are like right there on the mm-hmm. sideline, um, which is very unique and something we love about Tenny, but. Being able to just you know see the fans' reactions and hear them immediately because they're that close, it's it's it helps momentum s- uh, swing to our way if that makes sense. The 2023 MAC champion team that you were a part of, mm-hmm. what what is that feeling when you finally win something? Especially the program hasn't had as much success as it had when you were in that position that you finally raised the cup, raised the banner. What did that bring you? And then to this season, I know, you, of course, the goal is always to win it again. You're never going to say, we're not going to win it again. But do you feel kind of pressured to getting back into that situation? I think uh, Coach Wilkinson did a really good job, and, and all three of the coaches, um, kind of when we got into this year and even this semester um, in particular, he sat us down and and he – he openly talked about those pressures that we would mm-hmm. feel, and especially for the incoming freshmen um, and the freshmen now. Um, you know, a lot of them are, have big roles on the team already. Mm-hmm. So he made it clear that although, you know, there is pressure from last season, we're a totally different team, and we got to scrap it. Um, and, and just it's on to the next. It's, it's time for this team. This team's very different from last year. So it's time for this team to kind of make their legacy and and show what we're about. Talking about last year, um, I think just for us, obviously, we see you play on TV on the sidelines, but being in the championship and then working your way up to it, what were those feelings like? Uh, yeah, so going into playoffs, actually, we uh, we were really on a roll offensively mm-hmm. last year, um, and we had a veteran squad uh, on both ends, um, but... Going into that Quinnipiac game, which was the quarterfinals, uh, first time that lacrosse actually had a quarter. Usually it was just semis okay. and uh, the championship, but um, quarters was new this or last year. So going to Quinnipiac, we had the offense going, and, and we had a dominant game, which was awesome. And then, you know, we just kind of took that momentum and brought it into the semis against uh, Mount St. Mary's, which was a team that actually beat us in the regular season. Mm. So... We were going in with, uh, you know, with <laughs> to kill essentially, yeah. uh, and then, yeah, just just carrying all of that positive momentum and, and all those good plays that we made throughout the throughout the uh, playoffs. We wanted to carry that into the MAC championship and just continue to to make those hustle plays mm-hmm. and win ground balls because, at the end of the day, whoever's hustling uh, more is is gonna win. So. Yeah. Now, even though Will took a shot at my attendance, two schools that I attended, big lacrosse schools, Cornell and, and Syracuse. Syracuse. I did not attend Cornell. My daughter did. Cornell and Syracuse, and I went undergrad at Albany. So oh. Albany was good a couple years ago. Yeah. They had those, uh, those brothers that were playing that were mm-hmm. really, really good. And so I... The big weekend was the national championship weekend, Mm -hmm. and usually one of them, especially either Syracuse or Cornell, was in either the semis or or the finals. So Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, watched as a student of the game. Yes. Okay. Um, Like those big programs, though, Gary, they they were on national TV when the announcement video was mm -hmm. uh, going on on ESPN Mm two. Yeah, Yeah. that's feel good, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It was it was something that I experienced for the first time. Because uh, we haven't won the MAC since 2019, which was the year prior to me uh, mm-hmm. coming in. So it was definitely a, a, a really good experience. So uh, in doing my homework, my research from our crack research department. Um, so I have a family member who played lacrosse, played D3 lacrosse. And so I said, we have uh, a member of the team coming on. What what would you ask him if you were if you're here? And he wanted to know what you thought the difference, he said, I would be surprised by the answer, but he said, what do you think the difference in the levels are? D1, D2, D3, or even in your situation, when you're playing some of the other schools preparing you for the MAC, what do you see as maybe what those teams do 
either a little better than you to prepare you for the MAC? What do you see as the difference in levels? Um, yeah, so I think I think the pace of play is probably the biggest difference, and even even high school ball, like I, Milford, PA, didn't we didn't have the best lacrosse in our area because we were northeast compared to Philly is is really big with lacrosse, mm -hmm. uh, but so me coming from a high school that didn't play too good of teams, uh, coming into a Division One program, it was it was like it was a shock because the pace of play is is very different, and you have schools uh, in Division Two and Division Three who who are able to play at that pace. But I think um, throughout Division One lacrosse, that pace is more consistent amongst um, teams. Whereas D2, D3, there's really good teams that could compete, I think, with, with Division One teams, but then there's a bit of a drop off. Mm. But I think I think on that, whether you play Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, or even MC, MCLA ball, I mean, as long as you're playing lacrosse and having fun, that's that's the biggest thing. So when you f first got here, what, how long did it take you to Act ramp right. yourself up so that you can consistently play at that pace? That's a great answer. Yeah. I mean, that's a great Thank answer. You. Yeah, uh, freshman year, so uh, I was... You only played three games, right? Yeah, freshman mm -hmm. year was was like heavy into COVID. It was, yeah. it was masking outside of, like outside on campus, masking, uh, actually no, no in-class, uh, no classes like indoors. It was all Zoom, uh, so it was it was a bit of a, a different experience for me. I think, you know, freshman year in the fall, we weren't even allowed to make contact with each other. We didn't start like banging bodies until until the spring when we mm. got back for the season, and even then, there was a lot of uh, like campus shutdowns. Athletics were were shut down, so. It's almost a lost um, season. Almost a lost yeah, season. Yeah, yeah, and and luckily we were able to get our eligibility back for that year, yeah. um, so that was huge for us. But I wouldn't say until I'd say sophomore year, honestly, uh, was sophomore year fall was when I truly experienced the pace of the game. And I think Coach Wilkinson, Scarcello, and Calarusa they do a really good job with with just like we go immediately. It's we don't. He doesn't you know, slow things down. He doesn't, he doesn't kind of accommodate to like, like he teaches us, teaches us everything, but we go, like, as soon as we get on campus, the freshmen get acclimated quick. And, and, um, so I think that's a good thing. I'd say the first two, three weeks is, is kind of where you start to really understand the pace of the game and, and get into it. Now you guys are known, the lacrosse team is known as a very cohesive unit <laughs> guys. Rah, rah. I mean, just, you know, supporting other teams, so on and so forth. So how does that cohesiveness, as Will talked about this year, compare to the previous years that you've been here? Because that's that's one of the traits of the – does that come from Coach? Is that is that where it comes from? Yeah, I, I truly believe so. I think Coach Wilkinson is all, – all three coaches, I, I keep just saying Coach Wilkinson, but, but they really established a foundation within the program that that is – for the players and and you know we we kind of try to replicate what he wants from us and and we enjoy doing it i think we really put an emphasis on team camaraderie and and having great chemistry with each other on and off the field because even like hanging out off campus and and doing team events that really builds the team chemistry on the field what's the best team event that you've done uh it was last year, actually during spring break, because everyone's off campus. We uh, we did team bowling, okay. and That's uh, awesome. it, it was a good time. How'd that go? Uh, I was I was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's a turkey, right? That's what it is. It's a turkey is the yeah. best score. Or well, the best final 300. score. What in bowling? Yeah, three hundred. Yeah, okay. yeah. What's it? A turkey is three strikes in a row. A turkey's three strikes. Three strikes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had never heard that. Before. Yeah, really? but uh, Gary, uh, you have a you lot of you have a lot of stories, but I think I have one of my own. I was sitting in McCann today, and so I was just doing some work, waiting to do an interview with one of the cross country coaches, Chuck. I'm sitting there, and the door opens, and all of a sudden, you hear just a bunch of chaos, and all of these goons running inside, coming back from a practice. It's you guys. They go from practice field to the weight room. right to the weight room, yeah. and you would think that something is wrong, but they're just having the greatest time, and they're all yelling at Suma, the strength and conditioning coach, telling them that 
they're ready for them and they're coming and they're banging on the windows. It is the funniest thing I've ever seen. And I'm so glad that I was sitting there. What is that? How does that come about? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, we, we are a team on campus that really loves the weight room. Um, and coach Schumann knows that. And, and we kind of, we got to keep him on his toes a little bit and let him know that the lacrosse team's coming to lift. But uh, it just starts again with, with the coaches just establishing a really good foundation and, and making all of us understand that if we have something scheduled, we have to be committed to it 100%. Whether we're aching, whether we're tired, exhausted, it doesn't matter. We're going to do it no matter what. So might as well make the most of it and, and go in there and and compete with each other in the weight room, whether it's in the weight room or on the field. So yeah. I think that's where the energy comes from. And, and honestly, it's, it's from the guys, you know, like we feed off of each other and, you know, we, it's, it's all, it's always in us. Yeah. So it's just a matter of just bringing it out when we, uh, and we just always have to warn Suma that we're, uh, <laughs> this guy's your brand, man. This guy's great. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is great. This is great stuff. That is yeah. your brand. I yeah. mean, the lacrosse team is known as such a together team <laughs> and supporting other teams, but I'd like to go back a little bit to high school, mm -hmm. okay, if we could. Uh, there's a lot to talk about. I know Will wants to get into Puerto Rico, uh, which yeah, is- Yeah, I is can a, get into Puerto Rico. I have, a, a, I have ID. A great thing. <laughs> so um, you were a very successful football player, okay? Uh, and so take us back to when you were deciding what was going to be the next step for you. It was going to be lacrosse or was going to be football. What, you know, because I could see you as a- uh, uh, you know, running back, darting through the holes, <laughs> knocking people over. Uh, so uh, take us back to that, your thought process and what was going on. Yeah, uh, so I actually, I was a late bloomer, you could say, with the sport of lacrosse. I started, you, know, you have guys in Long Island and in the Philly they're, area. They're cradling stick from like they're, two. Yeah, they're, they're born with a stick in their hands, so... Um, in the cradle, they cradling. Yeah, yeah exactly. I try. Thank you. That's pretty good. <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty good. But I, uh, I got into lacrosse sixth grade, um, and it wasn't too big in my area. But all my friends started playing. I was a big baseball guy, um, and uh, I finally ended up trying lacrosse. Fell in love with it immediately. Um, what was it? What was it about that? Uh, that you must just, love, you like running. That you yeah, like. Uh, yeah. I don't mind running, <laughs> but. I think it was just the physicality and, mm. and the competitiveness. I think also I'd say lacrosse is, is the hardest sport that I've played, so I, I kind of accepted that challenge and, and wanted to be the best I could at it. Uh, so I kind of saw it as a challenge for me. And then um, I loved football in high school. It was... 43 TDs. <laughs> yeah. 43 TDs, 3,200... You don't think I do my homework. Oh, you. <laughs> 43 TDs, 3,200 yards, captain... Um, I mean, th there's some serious numbers there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, PA football is a lot of fun. It was it was definitely more competitive uh, than lacrosse in my area. Um, and people take their football very seriously. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We uh, something about Friday Night Lights. It was it was unbelievable. But um, you know, it was. I started playing travel lacrosse my f going into my freshman year of high school. So, which was a big commitment. So I already knew kind of then that that's what I was leaning towards. And then, you know, I started uh, running back my junior and senior year. And obviously, you know, when, when you're playing on the field, you're a starter, um, you know, and you're in season playing under the lights, it's, you definitely weigh the options a little differently. And, and you know, it's, it's hard to get away from football when you've been playing so long, but at the end of the day, I, I kind of always knew it was lacrosse, just with mm. travel ball and and uh, and recruiting, and especially I got recruited um, by Coach Scarcello actually um, my junior year of high school. They came to watch you play. Uh, they actually so they it was at an Under Armour All American tryout. I un, I didn't make the team unfortunately, but a lot of exposure there. So a mm. whole bunch of college coaches, uh, and fortunately Coach Scarcello was there, and he he reached out to me. Uh, it's funny. I had no idea 
what Maris College was. I had I had no clue. That's, that's unfortunate. Will was like that also when he decided to come. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a phrase too familiar with. That. Yeah, we, we need to change that. Uh huh. Yeah. You already you already have started that change. Exactly, but uh, so I had no idea, and then they told me a Division One program. I was like, it was my first D one offer, so I was like, oh my goodness, like. You were like, is this in Pogopsky? Yeah, I was, <laughs> I, the chills, all that <laughs> stuff. So. Uh, And then I ended up visiting like the following week or two weeks uh, after and fell in love with the coaches, fell in love with the the campus and got to meet some of the guys on the team. So right right there, I kind of knew I was was like, I'm going to play lacrosse in college. Now, something stuck out from my extensive research here that I need for you to explain. Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys have no idea where I'm going with this. I have no idea which route you're taking. You were junior class president. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Yes. But senior year, you were vice president. Yeah. What? What? What's that about? You took the back seat. Yeah. yeah uh, when you're when you're in control. <laughs> Actually, no, no. I, I can relate. We'll go to you. No, oh yeah. So. so I mean, I was <laughs> class president for four years because yeah. no one else wanted to do it. But you, you you usually go from vice president to president, not president to vice president. So yeah. I uh, need, I need an explanation <laughs> there. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so junior year, um, it was kind of. It was just like something that I thought about. Maybe be good on a resume someday. Oh, so absolutely, the resume. Um, but you're an honor society guy. Yeah, so, yeah. You know. So uh, you know, it's something I could just check off the list. Um, so I ended up running for president. Got it, which I was surprised at because it was kind of a last minute thing. Um, but you know, it was I, w- I wasn't the great president, like the greatest <laughs> president. I. I uh, I tried my best. I definitely did. But, you know, with sports and I, I just time was limited for me. So mm. I uh, senior year, I decided to step down mm. wow. you know, a That's level mature. just because just because there's definitely better candidates. That's mature. And also, uh, <laughs> I, I couldn't yeah, believe I saw it right yeah and also it was just people could have done significantly better. Wow. So I just, you know, what, you didn't get the concessions for the basketball game. Or, you <laughs> no, know, <laughs> It was it was a little bit Plus, of a debacle. Uh, president. Well, yes. back in your day, yes. yourself? I, high school, I just wanted to show up, play sports, and go home. <laughs> I was not in the high not school. A, not a high school guy? No. no? My, my GPA was bad. <laughs> but you're here, so That's I would true. keep that well, aside. SAT scores. <laughs> SAT scores helped that. I was okay. smart, just not uh, committed. Happens. Happens. And Will? I, yeah, yeah, I was. I was uh, my, 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 my school president. Yeah. yeah. All four years, or uh, I was I was for for, for eight years, seven years. Wow! Wow! Quite a run. Yeah. Junior and junior high, just all when you started. Well, when you I were, was in one school, so all the way through. Oh. Well, ba- I I did the middle school, and then uh, did, did the principal the, pick you up and take you to school every no, morning? No, 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 <laughs> no. I I I, I, lo- I loved where I went to school, yeah. and I tr- I know like like here, you know, yeah. you hear how passionate I am. We just yeah. saw it on our previous segment. Uh, I, I love, I want things to be good. Yeah. So when I got older, I said, even if, you know, I can't, you never can do anything. Yeah. You know that. You can't change. what Vending machines and gift cards, you can't do that. <laughs> Takes but, years. Yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm a good person to communicate. I, I got a lot of stuff done behind the scenes. Uh, with the sports stuff, we, we did a lot of things. But you weren't like Josh. I said, I you know not what? Like Josh. I'm I not doing a good was, job I here. I was not on the I'm stepping down. Field. So that, that is a big win on your book. All right. So when I say to you, okay, Wyoming College Prep, Crestwood, Scranton Prep, Dallas, Lake Lehman, any good games against any of those that stand uh, out? Some good rivalries. I'd say uh, Crestwood was a good one, Wyoming Sam. And Dallas were probably the top three, and Scranton Prep for a little bit as well. Those were the uh, the four major Good ones. Good memories, great memories. Some some sad ones, some losses, but. Um, Definitely good, good memories for sure. How, how far away is Milford from? Is it more on the Pittsburgh or the Philly side? Or I'm the uh, Scranton. Side? Scranton. Okay, so Scranton, Scranton yeah. Honesdale area. Yeah, okay. we we play Honesdale in, in football, not lacrosse. Yeah, actually, yeah. actually, I'm very familiar with Milford. Believe it or not, not a story. This guy is familiar with everything. <laughs> not a story. Anytime. The because I come, there. I come from <laughs> Sullivan County, and there's okay. a Delaware Valley in the western part of Sullivan County, mm-hmm. and there's a Delaware Valley in Pennsylvania, and the Milford is right over the border from like western part of Sullivan County. Okay. So I'm, I'm pretty familiar. Not, 
you know, I don't go shopping there or anything, but at one point I was pretty familiar. <laughs> so the commons, right? You were talking about <laughs> high school memories. I want to know about your memories that you've had with, let's say, last year's team, because that team was stacked with talent, and you talked about how it's a younger team this year because of all the upperclassmen that have now graduated. You had JoJo, the Embry twins. What have you learned from them, and what are the memories that you made with them? Yeah, I think a big thing, um, even starting from freshman year, I had a lot of a lot of confidence issues, and um, you know, getting into a more like a bigger role uh, last year, um, and it really kind of, you know, it, it, it dawned on me because there was a lot of stress with it, and it was my first time really having a a big role, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Um, but having guys with that experience, like JoJo and, and Kyle Stofka was a big one, um, James Lyons, all, all those guys, the Embry twins, they really took me under their wing and and made me confident. They, they forced me to be confident, hmm. um, whether it be just trusting me with the ball in my hands or before games, just, just talking to me and, and giving me words of encouragement. Um, and even Coach Wilkinson helped with that as well. He, he bought me a book, actually, um, it was last year, I believe, uh, going summer going into junior year, and and it was all about positivity and and the mind and just um, it it really helped me, and I think that was kind of the the biggest lessons I've learned is just to to be positive because your mind's everything, and eighty percent of the game's mental in any sport. I'd Have say. you seen that outside of the game, like you know, off the field? Has that helped you as well? Yeah, I'd say so. I, I'm a very humble person, so um, cool. it's not, you know, it's not, I don't let my confidence get, get too far, mm-hmm. and so I don't like, I'd say off the field, I'm nothing crazy, just just try to be my usual self, um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of. That book, though it was small and minimal at that point, that book could have unlocked something for you. <laughs> you mentioned it earlier, Gary. You're not just a Poughkeepsie Hudson Valley star. You are a Puerto Rico national team member. <laughs> Where did that come from? Besides Sir Patrick Gardner, to our knowledge, we have the other the swimmers, yep. the swimmers, Patrick Gardner, and yourself all at the same time being affiliated with a national team is huge for Marist. How did that happen, and how has that affected you? Yeah, uh, so junior year of high school, actually, there, my dad. Uh, and I, we found a post of the tryouts, and it was in uh, Mount Laurel, New Jersey, Hmm. um, which is right outside of Philly, and uh, we ended up going to the tryout. Oh, I'm sorry, not right outside of Philly, but um, uh, we ended up going to the tryout in New Jersey, um, and I fortunately made the team, and then that's kind of where we were planned to play in 2020 uh, in Ireland, Limerick, Ireland, and yeah, COVID, uh, COVID had other plans, so <laughs> that got pushed back a year. Uh, and then COVID was still present, causing a whole bunch of issues, so it got pushed back another year. And th- th- those were very really emotional times for my family and I, just because at that rate, we were just so defeated and, and expected to not even play. And then uh, luckily, um, summer of 2022, I believe, uh, we... We got the chance to go to Limerick Island, which was a U21 team. Um, and that was my first exposure with Puerto Rico lacrosse. Um, I played very well there, which, which was awesome. And um, that kind of led me to being invited to the men's senior team tryouts, uh, which was invitational only. And we tried out at UMass. Um, and uh, so the tryout happened. I had a pretty, pretty good showing. And I got the call from Coach Jernstead, who was our head coach uh, for the men's national team. And he said I made it, all that good stuff. And uh, next thing you know, we're headed to San Diego. Had a really, really, really talented group. Uh, We had Russell Melendez, who's at Hopkins currently, and Brandon Aviles, who's a really close friend of mine, who uh, was Syracuse all four years, and then uh, is at Hopkins as well for his grad year. But, um, yeah, I mean, those experiences definitely helped with my confidence as well because I had some pretty good plays and, and you're playing at an international stage uh, against really, really good talent all across the world. So um, that kind of 
helped me take a step back and put things into perspective and and really get me excited uh, and confident for the for the mayor season. That's unbelievable. Well, it, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It really is. It's a uni it, un immeasurable experience. Yeah, both, it was awesome. Both uh, culturally, uh, you know, maturity wise, just there's just so many things besides just playing the game that you gain from that. It's uh, uh, kudos to you, man. That is just, really that is just you, yeah. tremendous. That's a big, impressive. So before we get to why you're wearing the 34, which is also a testament to who you are, I need to, because I know that you're going to circulate this and have viewing parties of this uh, podcast, <laughs> so we need to mention the family. You come from a big baseball family. Yes. Okay? Mom and dad play co-ed softball. Twin sisters play softball. Brother plays baseball. You play... Talk a little bit about that. I mean, and mention their names if you would, please, because they're going to watch this. <laughs> yeah, uh, shout out to the family, uh, mom and dad, Anna and Edwin Balkersell. Um, but yeah, I think I mean both mom and dad playing co-ed softball. That's crazy. Yeah, That's great. Yeah, um, yeah. Baseball. My parents did a really good job with with letting the kids, like my siblings and I, decide what we wanted to right. do. You know, they they weren't really pushy and. In terms of you know you you should try to play this sport or, or like you know so um, they were they did a really good job with that um, and we are just a super competitive family so naturally we just kind of started playing sports and uh, I'm the youngest so I'd always get you know <laughs> my butt kicked uh, <laughs> whether it's Wii Sports or Ooh, good, you know good, basketball good. outside uh, they were always you know they never took it easy on me which which is kind of where I gained my competitive edge um, but yeah they, they were all into baseball my sister Marissa actually I have twin sisters Marissa and Jessica uh, there we go we, we, we go, and then Lots. you have to mention your brother too yes okay. brother Ed, Edwin as well okay Edwin there Jr. we go we had, to, we had to get every name in yes but uh, but my sister Marissa she actually was the first to play lacrosse in high school hmm. um and she got into it we were just a family of athletes but um like I mentioned like my dad especially when it came to deciding baseball or lacrosse since it's in the, in the same season so you weren't allowed to play both but my dad did a good job with it, it's whatever it's your life you know like whatever you want to play that's, that's you'll cool. play and and I really appreciated that from him and and it made it less stressful to Kind of steer away from baseball and, and start, you know. What's the team of choice in the uh, in the household? Yankees, uh, so Mets, we're, Phillies, we're, Pirates. we're Giants, Yankees, New York Giants, mm. and then uh, nice. New Very York solid. Yankees. You can come on this podcast anytime. <laughs> yeah. you want. Uh, Gary, you know, you know, Wii Sports, right? Wii Sports yes. is so okay. much fun. Yeah, I know. Yeah. What's yeah. The, <laughs> it's past his time. Is there? Uh, have you been ever entrenched in an argument with how I know that baseball and lacrosse are? compared a lot and very often is there ever a time where someone will say let's say hypothetically that baseball players are better than the lacrosse players and the lacrosse players are just the kids who didn't make it for the baseball team <laughs> i've heard that before a lot yeah. of like during middle school my middle school years it was like instagram you would hit like if it was the baseball guys and then comment if it was the cross guys. It was always a competition between the two. So I'm curious, being that he comes from a baseball family, mm -hmm. the difference. But he also played both sports. Yeah, yeah. See, Instagram. Yeah. You know. I know We're on Instagram. <laughs> Follow us on Instagram. Good plug. <laughs> no, I, I know exactly, exactly what you're talking about. Um, it's actually, it's hilarious because when I was, so fifth grade, was when a lot of my friends transitioned into lacrosse and I was still a baseball player and I would like chirp them so bad. I like, like making fun of them, all that stuff. And, and it, it happened to be that I ended up playing lacrosse. Uh, but, um, yeah, like a lot of, like you mentioned, like middle school, that was like a big thing. It's, I don't even know why, but, but like now like being mature, it, they're two different sports, but they're both competitive as hell so mm -hmm. see the thing is yeah. if you're mature it, that but that's what makes middle school and those grades so great is that you're not mature <laughs> yeah because if you're mature, then you don't then you don't do all those crazy things uh -huh. and all those you know as long as they don't get out of control besides I, I know pennsylvania doesn't really have like that stereotypical like lacrosse player but mm -hmm. the players that, <laughs> that you, was good thank you the players <laughs> that you play against i'd assume a lot of them i know for a fact are from the the dmv the the long island area mm -hmm. 
Is that stereotype real? The what up, man? Type lacrosse player. <laughs> I'd say uh, that's <laughs> like, like you know, there's you have kids in high school that like go to prep schools and mm. and you know are are at private schools and you can get that vibe a little where they're like almost frat boyish. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> um, I think that the sport in general has has gotten so big and continues to grow to where you're getting it's becoming more diversified. So mm. with personalities, ethnicities, all that stuff. Um, so we kind of steered away from that that specific stereotype, uh, which is good. I think lacrosse is heading in the right direction right now. Great uh -huh. answers. Yeah, no, he's um, <laughs> he's tremendous as I knew that he would be, or you know. Um, you're wearing the 34, and I talked about the camaraderie and the branding of the lacrosse team, which is very community-minded and you know very supportive of other teams on campus and i think that's a reflection of coach because i had the pleasure to work with him for five or six years a great guy um, and tell us about the 34 because it's an honor in the lacrosse program to wear that 34. Um, give us your story on that yeah i think you know with what this number means to the program and um you know how many hearts that Eddie Coombs and his family have touched um, after the tragedy. I think, you know, when you commit to Marist, uh, it's unique in the sense of 34 is, isn't as, you know, meaningful to other schools as it is to Marist College. So when you commit here, in the back of your head, you're always like, like my senior year, like I hope I get number 34. Like it's a dream. Hmm. And my class, uh, I had a class of 12, so we were a really big class, and, and many guys could have been candidates for it. Um, so just being able to, you know, be at my senior year and, and be blessed with the opportunity to wear the number, it, it's, it's a very emotional mo uh, moment for me and, and was something that, you know, I've always talked about and I've always talked to my family about. Um, but I just had to stay the course and, and wait for my opportunity. And, and I'm very fortunate that, you know, now's my time to wear the number. Uh, and, you know, big shoes to fill with, with previous 34 numbers. But the biggest thing Coach said when I received it was, you know, I, I earned this number for, for how I have been playing and how I have been acting. So there shouldn't be stress to have to be different because I earned this for being who I am. So don't try to be someone else now that I have the number. And I, I took that to heart, and I'm trying to do that the best I can. Those are, those are great words from Coach. And, I mean, from speaking with you for, for, for this long, you, you really are deserving of it. And Thank you. Thank parents you. were involved, involved in the process, right? Yeah, so uh, I didn't know at the time, but um, we were up at waiting for the coaches uh, for film. And Mr. and Mrs. Coombs came and uh, – which happens every time they, they give the number out, they show up. But uh, I was caught by surprise, and immediately as soon as they walk in, you know, get the goosebumps a little, get the chills. But um, they had some really kind words, and, and Mr. Coombs presented the jersey to me. Wow. And of course, the, you know, I, tears started flowing. I was getting emotional. I'm an emotional guy, so. Um, but I, I was very excited, and, and you know, the, the Coombs family is unbelievable. I have nothing but great things to say about them. So it was it was something that I'll remember for the rest yeah. of my life. Uh, it's, it's, That's touching. There's no words for that, man. I mean, it's just it's part of the program. It's embedded in the program. Unfortunate circumstances, though, leading to, you know, very positive uh, uh, outcomes mm -hmm. and the effect that it has on you and the other members of the team. And I know that you have that uh, uh, game in the, in the where you invite other teams come in the fall. And mm -hmm. It's just... Uh, you know, it's part of the fabric of the program, so it's quite an honor for you. I mean, it's tremendous. Mm -hmm. it's great. Thank yeah. You. Anything else, guys? That uh... no, I mean, this has been this has been one of our, our, our we've we've had a few guests on. They've all been great, uh, star-studded events that yeah. we've had so yeah. far. So just to wrap, though, uh, great career, Gretzky behind the net, <laughs> thirty-four, Mac play coming up uh, in your gut. What are you feeling getting ready for that first Mac game before we split? I think the guys are ready to go. We, we've been watching a lot of film and, and mentally we're just, 
we just want to get to Saturday. Also, it's... preseason poll number two. How is that possible? <laughs> that must have put a chip on your shoulder. Definitely. I think, you know, with, you know, people see us and how many guys they won the championship last year i don't know if people forgot but they won the championship usually you put the champ at the top and then everyone else after and (laughs) hopefully they're carrying some of your anger (laughs) i'm fire so you are fire just doing my job you are fire but i think i think you know seeing how many guys we lost from last year a lot of fifth year talent um i think that's kind of what they based that poll on and and that that just added fuel to the fire because you know I'm wrong. W- people say it as a rebuilding year, but no one in our locker room sees it as that, and and we're willing to prove it uh, and do whatever, do whatever it takes. So, do you have a COVID year? I do, I do. Any decision yet? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay with the Red Foxes. Oh, yeah, I'm so you can come excited. back next fall. It's tremendous. Yeah, yes. great. We are, yeah. We come back next breaking fall. News. Breaking news. Yeah, breaking yeah. news. Breaking it's news. It's coming back. Everybody yeah. we've had this year, they can come back next next yes. semester, which is Josh tremendous. Josh Falkersell, <laughs> season starts. Max season starts. Playing Wagner. Thank you for joining. Yeah. The great section. job. Thank, Thank you, so you much. very very Thank much. You. All right, great job. We'll be back after this, Josh. Ready to go with a five goal game <laughs> against Wagner. There's some roller. We'll be back. This episode is brought to you by the Hudson Valley Renegades. Their season opener is April 16th. You can check their website for more information on tickets. They used to be only a June, July, August team, but now that they are an affiliate of the New York Yankees, they play real baseball starting on April 16th, and if you want to see some of the young Yankee guns, uh, Spencer Jones just called up for spring training, played for the Renegades last year, and if Zolzer gives us tickets, we may have him on as a guest. So thank you, Hudson Valley Renegades, for jumping on the bandwagon and being a sponsor of the hottest podcast in college sports, the student section. To the student section, a lot of great material today. Talked about uh, Caitlin Clark, LeBron, the student section. Great stuff with Josh and Lacrosse. They open up the max season against Wagner. And so as we uh, dive into the red zone a little bit, guys, uh, the MAC tournament is coming up next week. Mm-hmm. But before we do that, let's give props to the uh, women's softball team. Oh, yeah. They've been scorching. A little round of applause. Yep. Uh, Coach Joe attaining his 400th career victory. Mm-hmm. You know, Joe pitched for the Yankees uh, back in the day. Great guy. And um, which leads me to uh, a shameless promo for our next student section when we have Alyssa Grupp from the uh, uh, softball team as uh, our featured guest. But props to them. Yeah. Uh, crushing it right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, they open up their home season, I think, uh, March 23rd or sometime around 22nd that. 22nd or 23rd, um, yeah. Against maybe Quintipia. a shock to their system playing in a little cooler <clears throat> weather after all the warm weather they've been playing in, but uh, uh, scorching right now. Yeah, they go to uh, Florida for spring break, so coming back to Poughkeepsie. And during around that time when they're playing in their MAC games, it'll be super windy and cold, and it's going to be miserable to cover, but got to do what you got to do. <laughs> um, Haley R., she is batting 468 as of today. That's top 50 in uh, the nation, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then they have, I think, five players who have an OPS over 900 for anyone who's into stats, obviously really good. Um, interesting note, Isabella Mannery played her twin sister against uh, Central that. Connecticut saw, State, yeah. which was pretty cool. That was the first time that she ever did that. And they actually beat Central Connecticut State 13 to nothing, and that was the first loss of the season for the uh, Central Connecticut State team. Um, and they already have 10 wins. Their only loss is to Maris. So they look good so far. Kylie's pitching uh, phenomenally. Um, she looks like she's in midseason form, and I think they're only going to continue to improve well, hopefully global warming will uh, strike Poughkeepsie. Uh, I so hope the so. Weather's in March and April, we're not uh, 
brutal outside for both players and fans. Will, take us to the MAC tournament. It's going to be coming up uh, yeah. next week. Maris men had a great run last year, led by uh, Patrick Gardner. He's a pro, mm -hmm. uh, playing very well for the Long Island Nets. And uh, what's your outlook? All right, so Atlantic, Atlantic City its the place to be uh, for the second <laughs> week of March. Yeah. I hope to find myself Can I give down. you one Atlantic City story? I, I, oh, boy. Oh. Hit us. So they play at Boardwalk Hall. Yes. Okay. So we had uh, uh, preseason in Atlantic City uh, one or two years. When you we say we, the we Nets had, we? The we Nets had preseason in Atlantic City. Because you're so accomplished, I wasn't sure which and team you were talking so about. The crazy part about it is we had a great practice facility, mm -hmm. but the owner, who's now deceased, a great guy, Lewis Katz, lived in Camden mm. uh, and wanted us to uh, go to Atlantic City. There was other issues involved. <laughs> and so we practiced. They had to bring everything down, all the equipment. But the reason I bring it up is what was going on in Atlantic City at the exact same time that we were practicing was an uh, adult entertainment convention. Oh. Fun. Right, <laughs> right, <laughs> right, <laughs> right next door to uh, where the uh, uh, the court. Gary, was. this is a so. this is a G-rated show. No, I said adult entertainment. Yes, it yes. was just jarring to me, yeah. you know, to leave. Pra no, there was nothing, nothing yeah. Yeah, going yeah. on, but it was just one type of crowd, <laughs> and then you had the basketball crowd. So that was my experience with that is Boardwalk funny. Hall. But anyway, I digress. Sorry for that. It was G-rated, right? I didn't. Oh yeah, no. Yeah. Well, yeah. But it politically was, correct. As it was always. very political. There was also a lot of other stuff that went on there. Bad. Nothing to do with either of that stuff. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, Boardwalk Hall. So whenever I see that, though, that just flashes uh, flashes in my mind. But Will, come on, give us your. Uh, All right. Uh, of so besides for that. Um, <laughs> Atlantic City, the prime place to be in March uh, for the MAC tournament. The standings today as of 12.30 p.m. on Wednesday, March 6th. Quinnipiac, Fairfield, St. Peter's, Marist, and Ryder. Those are one through five. They will all get a first round bye mm -hmm. and automatically get to the next round. Then it gets uh, kind of nit nitty gritty with the, uh, I'd say besides Niagara, you have Iona, who's streaky, mm -hmm. uh, Mount St. Mary, also streaky. Mount St. Mary is scary. streaky. And then, of course, Manhattan and Siena, who are not having good years. Now, They're going to be the me, 11th and 10th seed. Let me point this out to you, okay? Ryder on a six-game winning streak. Yeah, Ryder's okay? going to go. So Maris is at 11-7. and seven. Niagara's at 10-8. and eight. Maris has two games left, mm -hmm. Quinnipiac and Niagara. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it po and Niagara has already beaten Maris already. Correct. Is it possible that we drop? That we drop. Yep. Yeah, it, it's, it's possible uh, if we lose out that we drop. Uh, we could drop all the way to the uh, sixth uh, to the sixth to the sixth spot. I don't see us going. We, we physically can't uh, get lower than that, which would not be good. Um, five, okay, you'd play probably Niagara or Iona, uh, but I, I don't think you want to lose that bye, especially with the season we're having. But if we win out and, say, for instance, mm -hmm. Fairfield and St. Peter's lose out, we get tied for second or third. It's fascinating, and the parody. there's so much. Th these next games, uh, we play Quinnipiac, who... Um, I'm a little scared, a little scared of, uh, but then we play Niagara, whom I'm a little, you know, more, a little happier Senior about. day. Yeah, senior mm -hmm. day. But it's basically all up to the players. As long as we make the buy, I don't really care as much. I think the buy is the most important. But this year, like every year in the MAC, minus those couple of Patino years, it, it's really up for grabs. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw this out to the student section. When you play in the tournament, it's as big a challenge mentally as it is physically. Mm -hmm. On this particular team, who's the fiber that raises the level up of the guys to be ready to I, play? Is there any I, leader I, there? I think it has to be Isaiah, Isaiah Brickner. I mean, he was here last year. He, he made his name in the tournament. Uh, he's had a little bit of a lull in the action this season, but if he steps up and assumes that true sixth, seventh man role, plays some crunch time if there's some injury or some, some weird things happening with Josh and uh, Jade and Daughtry, who's having a fantastic season, mm -hmm. by the way. 
I think that he could be that that X factor off the bench. And honestly, Jackson Price, another person who just when he's on, he's on. There we've we've so many players this year that could just be on at the right time. And, and we saw it last year. Everyone was on at the right time. Brickner, Gardner, Daughtry, Salton, Harris, Cooley. Everyone yeah. was on. And if everyone's on and we make it, I, I feel confident that I'm going to be going to a, either a first four or a, a 16-1 matchup. I have a different answer because I don't like agreeing with Will. <laughs> uh, it would be Javon Cooley for me. He's the oldest guy. He's the vet of the team. Um, I think he knows what is necessary in each game. He's been – I don't know if he's been their most efficient shooter. I, I would say – yeah. Is, yeah, so – um, he knows what to do. He's shooting the ball well. He plays hard, hard-nosed defense. Um, I think he leads them as I think he's done the past few years. I know Dunn is very high on his leadership and pretty much everything that he brings to the team. So I think Javon is that guy who's going to propel them to where they want to go. And you need the upperclassmen to step yeah. up. Fun fact, Ooh. unofficially, unofficially attempt-wise, Javon Cooley, is shooting 45.5% from beyond the arc. And Steph Curry is shooting what? No, <laughs> and unofficially, that is good for, uh, of course, he'd have to qualify for third in the nation. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he doesn't take right. enough let's, threes. Let's hope he makes some of those uh, yeah. in Boardwalk Hall. Yeah, in Pascarelli as well. Mm-hmm. Gentlemen, great show. Great show. Have a uh, great spring break. You Thank as well. you. We'll and, see you. Oh, back we, should, we should, anywhere interesting that you're going? Are you going to be Atlantic in AC? City. Uh, I actually am going to the Big East tournament next Thursday. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. So, That's good. Uh, Yourself anywhere? Uh, yeah, I'll be on the beach in Punta Cana. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And will it be in Manhattan? I will. Yes, I, I don't do, I'm not Resting a big, up. I'm not a big vacation. Uh, we can tell. <laughs> we can tell. Not, uh, you, you need to get healthy. Yeah. He needs to Never settles up, this get one. healthy, and replenish his liquids. That's exactly uh, right. So that wraps up another section or another uh, edition of the uh, uh, student section Thank podcast. Thank you to Josh. Great show, guys. And yep. we'll see everybody uh, next time with our special guest, Alyssa Grupp from the women's softball team. Good luck to the uh, men's and women's basketball teams in the upcoming MAC tournament. Have a great spring break, everyone. We'll see you next time. Take care.